Just watch it. You're just a facilitator. Oh, yeah. You need to do bonsai instead of make cuttings. <laughs> this is a really smart three. <laughs> Came from a highly reputable bonsai nursery. Not yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> no, not yesterday, but not long ago. The, the dandelions are one of the features that make this tree <laughs> such a, a unique and desirable thing. This is Zelkova serrata. I'm not absolutely clear, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether it's a Japanese origin tree or not. Um, you bought it now, so it's too late. So I can actually say that uh, if this was a Japanese tree, I would have expected it to be better. Of course, if it was a Japanese tree and it was better, it would almost certainly have been more money. Um, within the trees that we, we buy from Japan, you know, supposing we limit, we limit to just thinking about uh, eight species of trees, that are classic bonsai subjects from Japan. So white pine, black pine, Chinese juniper, needle juniper, Ace of Palmetum, Japanese white beech, Selkova serrata, and maybe three or four other ones. Um, amongst those selection of species, Selkova serrata is one of the most expensive trees to buy from Japan. For a number of reasons. It's quite slow to grow. Uh, it's quite the, the, the classic way of making broom style bonsai, and this is not strictly broom style bonsai, from Selkova serrata. Uh, it takes a lot of time, but even more important than that, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge. All about pruning, mm -hmm. all about pruning. Um, it's, it's, it's not a tree you use much wire on normally to make broom style, but it's a tree that you need to think incredibly hard about to make the right decisions pruning wise. And like I was saying a, 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 about the ramifications on Mario's tree, even more so with Zelkova serrata, the image the Japanese are trying to get means that every single year lots of significant decisions are made about pruning to keep the beautiful fine structure otherwise you lose it you lose it over a period of time now this has not been dealt with in such quite such a way um, for a start off always look at the base of the tree if this is a japanese zelkova i would have expected a way way more impressive than bari um, and they would almost certainly have made this into a classic broom style where you have a fairly straight but um, maybe not tapering so much good good buttressing good nabari fairly short and straight trunk and then with all the branches coming from that one point but it, it's a lovely tree i mean um, i bought one here whose did i buy from here last oh, time zelkova who's George. was that Josh is right, sir. George. Josh. 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 That tree is so nice that I'm kind of hovering on keeping it for myself. But then I look at it in, in the book. I've got a book here somewhere, the, the book of the Japanese show, the Kokopoo. And I see what a really, really good Japanese Zokogo looks like. And I think, well, I, actually, I can't ever make that tree at home into, into that bonsai. Uh, but whether my wife would ever let me buy one of the really, really nice ones was another matter. This is a different trick. Uh, this is a nice, more of an informal upright. I'm not a great lover of worrying about labels for styles. Tree is a tree is a tree. How it looks in terms of fitting into a category of style, informal upright, windswept, slanting style. I don't, I, I personally don't need to label it. It can be just the tree it is. Um, it has a reasonable nabari. We pretty much, I'm certain we're looking at, the, you're looking at the front of yeah. the tree. This is almost certainly the front of the tree in here. The only really nasty thing about the front is this callus from an old pruning wound. Um, I, this tree came from one of my regulars who uh, part exchanged four trees for a much better tree at some point or other. I've no idea where he bought it from. He certainly didn't buy it from me. Um, 
it, 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 I suspect actually this has been made from a UK grown Zoltova. Um, probably just an ordinary nursery tree, but it's, it was started, it was, its life was changed from being an ordinary nursery tree uh, um, to a bonsai many, many, many years ago to have got branches like this from scratch, certainly from scratch. It's taken a very, very long time. It's just a pity they didn't work this colour a little bit more and a little bit better. It would be quite difficult at this late stage It'd be probably worth trying it. There's a danger that we could end up making it more ugly than, than not. Because we, you know, this, this amount of callousing that you can see here. Um, how, it, could that, it, how could that have been reduced at the time? And you say. Well, let it callous a bit and then carve it away again. Um, and, and that way you get it to roll in in little bits slowly and fill the whole space. Um, so and it's it just is, cut and left. Mm, that's just been cut and left. And if you seal it when you cut, would that help it to heal? No, it doesn't, uh, well it does help a little bit, but it wouldn't cure that, it wouldn't stop that. I mean the, the sealing is more to do with preventing ingress of, of um, things we don't want, like you know, like the, the few adverse fungi spores that might. Uh, I mean, the, the sealant does have a, a, a wound, it stimulates callousing, but, but the, for that to work, you need to not just do it once. Mm -hmm. you, you know, when you look at Japanese people who've, um, who've, who've made an excellent job of, of sealing, um, of callousing over uh, wounds, then it's, it's like so much in bonsai, you know, it can be very simple. You cut it off and you let it callous. Or it can be very, very complicated. You cut, you cut it off, and then you begin to work the callus if you want to hide so it. So what Sorry. time uh, factor are you talking about? Six months you trim it but, again? No, a year. year. Once a year. Once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Oh, that's not too complicated. And, and um, what it, the thing is, it's, it's, it's the knowledge of, uh, of what to do. How much, how much to, cut. to cut out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, I can't pretend that I've you know I have I actually don't have that knowledge. I, mean, I have a little you, bit of knowledge. Do you take it all off, or do you take pinches? No, you take it all off. Take it yeah. all off. Mm. Even the growth. Not the. If the a bit not, of the not the whole of the callus off. that you've created. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you leave some of that. Otherwise, yeah. you just you're keep to, going back on the same. You're trying to let it. Um, yeah, but you want it. Yeah, you want it to callus over. Um, um, Difficult to draw this. Um, if, if that's your wound, uh, then you looked at from this way. You wanted to callus over a little bit, and then you you wound it here again. It's more a case of wounding rather than removing the callus. That stimulates another little bit of callusing, and then so it's almost like you're you're doing it in in, in rolls like that. Yeah. Um, what's happened with that callus is they just allowed one big. One big callus to occur, mm -hmm. and uh, this bit is still not covered. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, another way of dealing with it is to is to actually make a hole, make a what yeah. the Japanese called uro, right. and that's just simply a hole like you might expect to see in an old tree that's happened. Mm -hmm. And then you could you could maybe make that counting a little bit more interesting, because mm -hmm. at the moment it looks very uniform and, and mm -hmm. kind of fat and, and kind of ugly. So, uh, the other thing is just to say what's a feature of the tree. What would I do? Mm. I think you could certainly cut some away and, and make it look a little bit less mm. ugly. Uh, mm. But it, actually, we haven't really come today to talk about the shape, reshaping or, or changing the shape of the tree. We've talked about yeah. getting in in a different part. And I, I freely admit, is it, all the while this sat at the nursery, I kept thinking I must put that in a different part, a nicer part. That we're, um, you know, uh, my personal preference is pretty much to put all of the deciduous trees into coloured pots. It's certainly a Japanese thing. Mm -hmm. Japanese would use often quite brightly coloured yeah. pots, yeah. which are in not not to people's taste in this country generally. Uh, to some extent, it is my taste, and some extent, it isn't. Mm. Um, I don't sort of rule anything in or rule anything out. I mean, so much depends on the tree and so much depends on the pot. Mm. Um, but um, certainly, I mean, 
um, remember yesterday I was talking about pure akadama. I'm not sure whether this is just the top version or whether this is pure akadama. Mm -hmm. But uh, either way, um, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna we're gonna put it in what might be a little bit better mix. Yeah. Um, you know, we were talking about um, in curved pot, uh, pots, and the reason it doesn't matter because you know this is gonna be cut all the way around here. That's the first exercise to do. Mm. And we can cut that right the way down like I feel the bottom of the pot there. Mm. Do that all the way around and this tree just lifts out. Mm. Doesn't matter because then, then get it out, the next thing, I'm afraid all this lovely moss has got to go. I'm afraid even the beautiful dandelions have got to go. Mm. And for the first time, instead of what I've been doing at the nursery, it's just simply cutting the wretched things off, which so they disappear for a little while until they grow again. Um, this time we can actually get the whole of the wretched roots out because we're going to pretty much bare root this tree. We could have that with salad for our lunch. We could indeed, yes. And that actually, and believe you me, that's what I need after having spent two days with Mr. Donnelly, <laughs> having a fry up and then forgetting um, bolognese and um, garlic bread and that. But, it's quite a long job for you today mm. to actually get this uh, cleaned right out. Mm. Maybe we'll even decide to completely wash the root system. Then I want to have a really good look at this nabari mm. and see how we can improve this nabari. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. Mm. But we can't see anything at all at the moment. Um, uh, I mean, for sure we can't make this into a perfect nabari, but there may well be some bits that we can prune away. Mm. We might even be able to move bits. But we can't see a thing at the moment. Mm. So you watch me do that with that trident yesterday. I want exactly the same process done with mm. this. Get it out of the pot, work on this top surface first. Work in a radial way, either with a hook or with um, a pokey stick. The highly technical name for our piece of Japanese tool, pokey stick. And then when we've done that, then we loosen the underside. Mm. Exactly, it's exactly the same process I did with the trident. We're not going to find such a perfect root system as we found with the trident, but we're going to have a pretty good root system. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we can get on with it. So, and, uh... I see that. Hold that up there, Danny, in a second. And hold that right, Zuma, and we're going to. Yep. You see there, that's where the wall's right in there, and that's clear, just behind yes. the hose. Yes. Um, it's less traumatic for the tree hooking away in there, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah.